Good morning. I want to welcome you to this service for First Presbyterian Church here in Pilot Mountain for this Lord's Day, July 18th, 2021. Uh, a few announcements that we have uh, that need to be uh, announced. Uh, Kevin Blakeney is doing an Eagle Scout project at Central Park in King. It will be on the 21st. It's a fundraiser spaghetti dinner at Trinity United Methodist Park, uh, Church in King from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Donations only. So please uh, take a moment to go down there and, and support Kevin. Our monthly session meeting is scheduled for tomorrow night at 7 p.m. If you have any questions or concerns, please see myself. Is this fading in and out? Yeah. Okay. Am I on? What's the next question? Yes, I'm on. There. Is that better? All right. Let's see. Nope. There we go. Okay. I'm going to stand right here. Don't I was going to say, I'm not going to turn to the choir today. Sorry. All right. We do have a session meeting at 7 p.m. If you have any questions or concerns, please see myself or one of the session members, and we will take care of that. Uh, there is some fresh produce in the fellowship hall. It is corn, squash, beans. What else is there, Jim? Just about everything. Just a little bit. Mixed bags. Mix, mix, mixed bags. So there are bags as well, so please go and, go and take some of the of the. Of the or, produce that is in the fellowship hall. Are there any announcements that I might have missed? I'd like to announce about the <clears throat> show at the Andy Griffith Playhouse back to the 80s is this afternoon at 3. It's um, and also tomorrow night at 7.30 and our one of our members, choir members, is the lead in that. Michael Center, Wilson and I, my brother Wilson and I play in the orchestra on keyboards robert tickle is on drums and a guy a fantastic guy on guitar nine years i mean ninth grader i guess you might say. so come out and support the the theater and the, the arts and our folks in community thank you thank you sherry if there are no other announcements, please join me in our call to worship printed in your bulletin. Come into the presence of the Most High God with songs of praise and shouts of thanksgiving. You are a holy temple in the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, let us worship God.
Scripture tells us if we say that we have no sin, we are found to be lying and God is not with us. So let us join together in our unison prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, your steadfast love endures forever. We confess that we act if we are in control, as if you were blessed whatever we do. If we think of others at all, it is with an eye toward their usefulness to us. If we consider your creation, it is to ponder what benefits us. We have failed to show your love or to do justice and obedience to you. We have no right to be called your children. Have mercy on us, God of grace. Lord, have mercy. Forgive our sins, we humbly pray. Put the mind of Christ within us, O oh God, so that our lives take the form of a cross. Use us to break down walls of hostility within the church, among the nations, and around the world. Equip us to do your will, giving you glory, honor, and praise together with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Friends, our Lord Jesus gives us grace, rest, and peace. Our Master's touch heals us, and His shed blood is our salvation. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Christ, for he is our peace. 
In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with his commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On August 13, 1961, East German soldiers began to set up barriers on the border between East and West Berlin. And at first it was just the soldiers. Then came the tearing up of the roads that linked the two cities and the barricades of barbed wire entanglements. The barrier that began so simply would become known as the infamous Berlin Wall. This wall was an international symbol of the division between the East and the West, and not only East and West Berlin, but Eastern and Western Europe and the United States. It was a wall that divided and made strangers of people who should have known each other because they were of the same city, they were of the same families, they were of the same friends. But this massive wall that divided them made them into strangers. But then on November 9th, 1989, the unimaginable happened. People were gathered at the wall in protest, and some began to climb the very thing they were protesting against. Now the strange thing about this was there were no shots fired at any of those climbing the walls. And then someone brought a sledgehammer, and the wall began to come down. What was unimaginable, what had never been deemed possible that morning, suddenly was taking place. And though it took until 1994 for the entire wall to come down, that November night marked the beginning of the end for the Berlin Wall. Now it also marked the beginning of the reunification of Germany and the coming together of a nation that had been divided for over 40 years. There were families that were once again allowed to be together, to get to know one another. There were friends who had been separated for years, who were finally getting back together once again. But most of all, there were no strangers in the sense that they were no longer East and West Germany, but they were now only Germany. There was no longer a wall that divided the two sides, and the hostility that once existed between the two sides was no longer there. It was as if a new day had dawned and a bright future ahead of the country. Now in Paul's book of Ephesians, he is writing to the Gentiles who had come to Christ. In the text before today, they were told that they had been dead in sin and that it was by the grace of God that they were saved. They were transformed by grace, not of themselves. But now he turns to another issue that needs to be addressed, the unity of the church. Now it is often said that where three of a certain denomination are gathered, there are five opinions. And it would appear that the church in Ephesus, there were those of the opinion that they were better than others. They were seen as ones who looked down upon the Gentiles because they were not under the covenant as the Jews had been. The Jews were telling them they were not really a part of the church really because they didn't do the certain things that the Jews did to become Christians. And Paul will have none of this. He writes both sides and tells them that this is all nonsense. He first tells the Gentiles that, yes, you were once strangers and aliens. Literally, you were foreigners in a land of the covenant where the Jews were citizens. This was when they were without Christ, though. They had been without hope and without God. 
And the word used here for without God is where we get the word atheist. And Paul is not saying that they did not believe in a God. Far from it. What he is saying is that they were without the one true God. The one God of Israel. This would have been seen as an insult to the Gentiles being called an atheist. And here's how Phoebe Perkins states it. Atheos was more than just a description of non-belief. It was an insult, implying that one was uncivilized. Those who rejected the gods and their laws were akin to anarchists and threatened the well-being of society. Both Greeks and Jews could be accused of this. Greeks were rejecting the god of the Jews, and Jews were rejecting the state-sponsored religion. For Romans to be told that they were uncivilized and not citizens was an anathema to them. Citizenship was highly prized in the Roman world. It opened all kinds of doors for the people who had it. And to be told that they were not citizens, but strangers or foreigners must have been difficult to hear. But Paul tells them that there is hope. Carol, can you just turn on the... Okay, I'm going to switch this. No, I'm going to switch this off. There is it. Can everybody hear me now? Okay, we're going to go this route today. But Paul says there's hope. It is from Christ that they have unity. Because of the sacrifice that those who were far away were brought near. Because Christ and from Christ we now have peace, our peace, that is between the Gentiles and the Jewish Christians. And the peace does not just mean the cessation of hostilities between two armed groups or an armed truce that must be held on either side. No, peace is based on the word shalom, the Hebrew word. And it speaks of well-being, of wholeness, prosperity. It denotes a state of concord and harmony, particularly in personal relationships. And with this peace, Christ has broken down the dividing wall that was between the Christians. And what was this dividing wall? One commentator asked these questions. Could it have been the literal balustrade in the Jerusalem precincts that marked the maximum nearness to the temple that Gentiles could attain? The one that divided the court of the Gentiles from the court of the Israelites and epitomized the hostility and division between the two? Or was the barrier a metaphor for the fence around the Torah, i.e. the oral regulations and traditions? Or the law itself? Or are our sins the barrier between us and God? Or finally, is the barrier the wall that divides the earthly from the supernatural? The fact of the matter is that no matter what the dividing wall was, all of these barriers have been abolished by the death of Christ on the cross. There is now nothing that keeps the two groups apart. It is through the death of Jesus that a new humanity has been created. The whole basis of true Christian unity is Christ. Professor Merwin Johnson said that true unity in the Christian community comes from Christ, through Christ, and in Christ. It is from Christ that we have full unity. It is from Him that we have this peace. The peace that was proclaimed to those who were far off in the distant country, the Gentiles, and to those who were near and the citizens, the Jews. It is from Christ that we all have the same access to the Father through the Spirit. This is again the Trinity working together to bring about the reconciliation of the world and to bring us into communion that is shared with them. And it is through Christ that those who are far off are no longer strangers, but now citizens with the saints. Not only that, they are members of the family of God. Now this does not mean that someone who is a distant relative, a third cousin, twice removed, who one only sees during the large family reunion that meets every year. No, these family members are close. They are there day after day after day. They are ones who know you and love you no matter what you do. Members of this family are there because they are members through Christ. 
And it's because of what Christ did on the work of the cross and the resurrection that it is so. And finally, it is in Christ that we find our unity. Paul tells the Christians that the household of God is built upon a foundation that is the apostles and their teachings and the prophets of old who taught that God was bringing about the reconciliation of the world. And while this is the foundation with these teachers and these prophets, Christ is the cornerstone. A cornerstone was and is part of a foundation that is laid with great ceremony and is part of the foundation that told just what the building was. But there's something else that the word cornerstone could mean. It could be translated as keystone or capstone. And this is a stone that is placed right in the middle of an arch. It is the stone that holds the whole thing together. It is the stone that takes the two sides and brings them together into one whole. Jesus is seen as the one thing that brings together both sides that had been separate. Jesus is the capstone. And what is built by Jesus that is keeping it together, that he's keeping it together? It's a new structure that becomes the holy temple of the Lord. There is to be no more physical temple, but one that is the believers that Christ has joined together in himself. It is a spiritual temple that will now be the dwelling place for God. And like the Jews and the Gentiles, the East and West Berliners, there is often hostility between people and churches. We have our own groups inside and outside of the walls that split and call each other names. You may have heard the names. Snowflake, liberal, conservative, republican, democrat, millennial, boomer. Each name is used like a weapon. They are used to divide like the words used in Ephesus against one another. And we continue to build walls that divide us. Or we may not have walls at church, but walls that divide those who are outside of the church. We build walls to keep those who we believe, who we believe will make our country less safe. We build walls through legal means to separate ourselves from those we deem less than us. We build walls. We question. We ask. But do we reach out to other Christians? Do we reach out to those who are Jewish or Muslim? Do we reach out to those of other faiths that we do not know? Do we reach out to the ones that are called the nuns? Do we reach out to the one who is the addict? Do we reach out to the immigrant who has just arrived? Who do we reach out to and why? We are called to reach out to all people, to show them the love of God that is personified in Jesus Christ. We are to remember what Jesus brought us together with those who were first in the covenant. We were without hope and without God. We were in the far country. We were strangers. But Jesus came and brought us into citizenship with those of the covenant who already had that citizenship. Because of what Jesus did, not anything that we did, nor what we will do. We who were on the outside looking in have been reconciled with those who were on the inside. Sometimes it's shocking to hear that we might be on the outside. There are many of us who have been in church most of our lives. We have been on the inside. But in reality, we were on the outside. All were on the outside until Jesus made the sacrifice to reconcile us in grace and in mercy. Unity in the church comes from Christ, through Christ, and in Christ. It is Christ who does the work that unites us all. It is our job to work together, taking the good news to the world and showing the world that even with our differences, we are united in Jesus Christ. We are strangers no more. Let's start acting up. Amen.
Our affirmation of faith this morning comes from a brief statement of faith, Numbers 3, 5, and 6. So let us join together and state what we believe. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator. Ignoring God's commandments, we violate the image of God in others and ourselves. Accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation. Yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant, like a mother who will not forsake her child, who the father who runs to welcome the prodigal home. God is faithful still. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we turn now to the prayers of the people, I ask that you look at the page 6 of the bulletin for our prayer concerns, those of our congregation, and those of family and friends in our community. Are there any prayer concerns that need to be added? Yes, yes ma'am. Bill Hall, former principal at East City High School. Bill Hall? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. If there are no others, let us now turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. O God, jerk merciful and just, kind and compassionate, forever faithful. For your own name's sake, we pray for the world. Christ came to save. We pray for the kingdom that you are bringing through Christ. Bless the church, the body of Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, so that our strength is renewed like the eagles. Then send us out to proclaim the good news that is in Jesus Christ, that there is newness of life. We pray that for all who are weary from hard labor, especially for those who are not fairly paid, for those who work in dangerous places, for those trapped in slavery. We pray that you break the yoke of oppression and bonds of bitterness for each and every one of those. We pray for all who serve on behalf of others, especially those who are caring for the sick, for the elderly, for the dying, for those who fight fires, enforce just laws, serve in the military, for those who hold public office. We ask that you build up all people in peace and freedom. We pray for ourselves that we will remain and be faithful, especially in times of temptation. We pray that our diseases that will be healed so that we have strength to serve others that our love for one another and you grow ever deeper each and every day. Make us into a holy temple in the Lord. Build us spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Praying the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Loving God, you have given us so much. Unite us in you. Be with us as we go out into the world. Bless the food that we are about to partake. May it give us strength and courage to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen.